In today's video, I'm going to teach you liquidity KPIs, which looks at the balance sheet and makes sure that the company has enough current assets and cash to cover its short term obligations. So this is pretty important for anyone who's getting into finance, either as a financial analyst or a CFO, or if you own a business and you wanna make sure that you have enough liquidity in your business. We'll be looking at KPIs such as current ratio, quick and cash ratio, net working capital. Uh, we'll look at the purpose from each one of these KPIs, the formula, and then we're gonna calculate together based on an actual balance sheet. We're gonna look at the results. And then I'm gonna show you a benchmark by industry. And this is probably the most important step here uh, is to benchmark and to interpret the result by industry. So manufacturing and retail is different than technology, different than services. Okay, so let's jump in and dive into this calculation. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Bill Hanna. I'm the financial controller. I've been working in finance for the last 18 years in New York City as a controller. Uh, and I give back my experience in this channel here and on my website, the Controller Academy, where I have uh, various courses in finance and accounting to teach you how to become a controller or financial analyst. So go ahead and check that out. But today's video is pretty important because not only we're gonna focus on the liquidity, which is basically based on cash, the most important asset that the company has, uh, but I wanna go through the calculation and then the benchmark by industry so that you can know based on the industry of your employer or your company, where you fall at in that spectrum from being poor to being very rich in terms of liquidity. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, we have the current ratio, so we'll start with that. Uh, the purpose of the current ratio is to measure the uh, overall ability to cover short-term debt with short-term assets. So it's pretty easy, right? Short-term debt, and when we say short-term, we're saying 12 months or less, right? So this is less than a year. Uh, anything longer than a year in terms of assets that takes longer than a year to convert into cash or in terms of liability to materialize, anything longer than that becomes long-term. So we're focused here on the short-term. Okay, so the current ratio measures overall ability to uh, cover the short-term debts from short-term assets. Therefore, the formula is current assets divided by current liabilities. Pretty easy. Right, so let's go ahead and calculate and then we're gonna benchmark that against industries. So for the calculation, we're gonna say equals current assets right here divided by current liabilities. Okay, so 1.6 is a number that we get as a current ratio. Now, it becomes important to look at the ideal by industry. So we have manufacturing, technology, and services. So for the ideal by industry, for uh, manufacturing and retail, it is between two and five. So anywhere between two and five is considered ideal. Uh, for technology, however, uh, anywhere between one and three is ideal. Uh, services is also one and three is similar to technology. Now, the reason why manufacturing is higher between two and five is that the manufacturing sector is known for its capital intensive nature, uh, often showcases high current ratios, right? Uh, this reflects the necessity to maintain substantial inventory levels, right? So that's, this applies to manufacturing and retail. And that's why it is higher because inventory is included in this calculation here. Uh, with technology, however, uh, has minimal uh, physical inventory, right? So you're not carrying any inventory that will increase this number here. Uh, and rapid asset turnover, uh, technology sector often features lower uh, current ratios overall. Okay, and a similar feature is gonna be in services because in services also you're uh, running very lean on, or no inventory at all. Uh, so that's why you get a lower uh, ratio. So uh, the ideal figure is going to be anywhere between one and five, depending on uh, the industry. Now, let me show you where I'm getting these numbers, the ideal by industry, so that you can find out in your own based on your specific industry. So if you go to the website fullratio.com, you can actually find your current ratio by industry. Uh, not only you'll find that, so you're going to find, you know, all the sub industries here and the uh, ideal uh, current ratio, but also you'll find industries with the highest current ratio and then industries with the lowest current ratio and an explanation for each of these reasoning behind the high or low current ratio. So go ahead and check out fullratio.com. I'm going to leave a link down below. All right, so now that we covered current ratio, let's jump into quick ratio. So now with quick ratio, um, this is a stricter version of the current ratio. 
Why? Because it excludes inventory and prepaid, which makes sense if you think about it. We are saying quick ratio. And quick means that it's uh, an asset that is quickly convertible into cash, right? So that's going to only include probably the uh, items that can be converted into cash, which includes cash itself, uh, treasury bills, um, security deposits like CDs, um, accounts receivable that can be converted into cash quite easily. But it's going to exclude inventory because inventory um, is not as easily convertible into cash as the other assets, as well as uh, prepaid expenses. Um, all right, so what is the formula for that? Uh, well, the formula is going to be current assets minus inventory minus prepaid expenses divided by current liabilities. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So we'll say equal current assets minus uh, inventory minus prepaid expenses and we'll put all of that in parentheses and we're going to divide that um, divided by current liabilities. Uh, we get 1.2. Okay, again, when you look at any of these uh, ratios on its own, uh, it's hard to interpret. So you got to look in uh, with context against benchmark. So when we look at benchmark by industry, uh, we'll find that uh, for manufacturing and retail, the normal is one between one and three. Okay, so in our case, we are falling in in the lower end of that normal range. Uh, technology has a higher range, so it goes up to four. Um, and then with services, uh, it goes between two and four. The reason for the manufacturing and retail industry that it's falling on the lower end uh, is that because manufacturing industry typically shows a uh, lower uh, quick ratio because of the inventory uh, levels. So because we're excluding inventory, now we're going to have a lower ratio. Now with technology, companies in this sector often exhibit higher quick ratios, primarily due to their low inventory levels and substantial cash reserve, and that makes sense. Uh, services oriented companies generally report higher quick ratios, um, given the minimal physical inventory requirements, uh, these firms rely on more of a human capital and intangible assets. Okay, that makes sense, uh, and that's why we have these ranges here. Now, let's look at the next KPI, which is a cash ratio. Now, cash ratio is probably the most conservative of these liquidity measures uh, because it measures only cash and cash equivalent against current liabilities, right? So it ignores all other current assets and it says, I don't care about accounts receivable. Uh, accounts receivable, it's not readily and easily convertible to cash as other treasury bills and CDs and things like that. So it's only going to look at cash and cash equivalent and say formula, uh, cash and cash equivalents uh, divided by current liabilities. Uh, so when we do that in this case, we'll do equal cash and cash equivalent divided by current liabilities, and we'll get 0 0.3. So this is the lowest of these ratios, um, and it's a, that's why it's a conservative ratio, because it's only showing uh, cash against current liabilities. When we look at the benchmark by industry, we'll find that for all industries, uh, the quick ratio is going to range between 0 0.1 and 2.0. And so it's a big range. Uh, this company here happens to be falling on the lower end of it with 0 0.3. To get uh, the benchmark by industry, I'm going to show you the website that I rely on. So I usually go to readyratios.com, uh, which has the cash ratio broken down by industry. Uh, so you'll see that some of these industries have pretty low uh, cash ratio, 0 0.24, 0 0.1, and then it ranges sometimes over one. So this is where I get my benchmark by industry. And now we're down to the final uh, liquidity KPI, which is net working capital. Now, networking capital is, is not a ratio. It's a, a simple dollar value showing the available short-term uh, cash available on hand, right? And that's going to be your buffer in the business. So the formula goes um, current assets minus current liabilities. And to do that, we'll say equals current assets minus current liabilities. And that's going to give us a dollar amount. It happens to be a, a million dollars in this case. And that just tells me as a financial analyst or a business owner that I have about a million dollars in buffer uh, in excess cash above my current liabilities uh, to cover in the short term. All right, this has been a quick tutorial on liquidity KPIs. Again, essential for any financial analyst or someone who owns a business and want to analyze their financials. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and share it with someone who will benefit from it and I'll see you in the next video.